Hi guys, so I am here with my November reading wrap up. I know I say it every time, but where the bloody hell did November go? It's like I blinked and it ended. Um, I'm recording this on December 1st, as you can see. I'm in full on ready for Christmas mode. Um, of course, um, today as I'm recording this is the first day of Vlogmas. Um, which I will be doing as I have done for the past three years I want to say um so if you're interested in watching that make sure that you check it out I always do um a playlist for each year so if you go to my channel you'll see vlogmas 2018 and each video for every day will be there just in case you wanted to know um so as for my reading in November I'm really happy with everything that I got read in November I read 10 books um which I was very surprised because it's been a fairly busy month for me work-wise um each week is just you know a grind um very busy time um so i'm surprised i read as much as i did particularly because the first book that i read i started reading in october uh, if you guys remember um and i finished it in november and that is kingdom of ash Ash by Sarah J Maas. Um, this is the concluding instalment of the Throne of Glass series and it's massive. I actually read um, the Kindle version because the book, I pre-ordered the hardback copy um, and it was absolutely huge, you know, it's really, really heavy um, and I was like, I'm, ne I'm, I'm not going to be able to carry that around with me, you know, on public transport to be reading, etc. Um, so I decided to download the um, Kindle copy to actually read, um, which I'm glad I did. And oh my God, you guys, I loved this book. I would I would have wanted to read it as soon as it came out anyway, um, to try and avoid as many spoilers as I could. But I also wanted to get it read because on the 9th of November... Um, I went to London to see Sarah J Maas, there was a, um, a Waterstones event at Cadogan Hall um, and there was like, you know, a Q&A with her and she was talking. It was a spoiler free event, um, so she didn't actually give away any spoilers, but I felt better having read it um, and it was amazing. You could sign Sarah's copy of Sarah J Maas, Sarah's copy of Kingdom of Ash and... Um, if you've read this book, I made sure that I signed chapter 89 because, oh my God, you guys, the feels in this book. This book made me cry. Um, I feel like it was such a perfect conclusion. Um, you know, I was really excited for this book. I was really nervous for this book because I was like, what is going to happen? The ending, um, you know, to the previous book, well, the previous, was it Empire of Storms? It's Empire of Storms. Yeah, the end of Empire of Storms was like, you know, a, a real cliffhanger ending. Uh, so, you know, we've been waiting for this book, what was going to happen. Um, you know, everything's heading towards an epic, like, war slash battle. Um, so many elements in this book. And it was just absolutely amazing. I loved it so much. Um, it was an absolute whopper. It was um, nearly a thousand pages um and it was just amazing like truly truly amazing hands down my favorite book of the month will definitely be in my favorite books of the year be on the lookout for that next month um beginning of next month probably um but yeah just absolutely amazing you know this series has been with me for such a long time pretty much i think near the beginning of me starting my channel pretty much um throne of glass was one of the very first arcs that i got sent for review so it's a very special series to me i love it so much um five out of five stars a million out of a million stars like just <sighs> amazing absolutely amazing so um the next book that i read um well actually i read um two books by julia quinn um that are part of the same series i don't know what the series is called i read the first book in the series last month which was splendid so then this month i read one after the other i read dancing at midnight and i read minx Um, these were really cute historical romances. Um, I started reading Julia Quinn last month, I think. Yes, it was last month. 
Um, and I was still in that Regency romance kind of um, mood. And particularly after reading Kingdom of Ash, I was like, I need something light. I need something fluffy. I need something happy. Um, so I delved into those. Um, out of the two, I think I preferred Minx. Um, but both were really, really good. Um, Dancing at Midnight. Um, I can't remember all of the characters' names. Um, but one is about sort of an injured war hero he was like um like a seventh son or something but because of his service he gets gifted a little bit of land so he becomes a baron and then he meets um one of his his friend's wife's cousin um and they sort of have an immediate not dislike but they have you know that sort of friction and um he doesn't think he's good enough for her but she ends up really liking him and it's this back and forth and um really enjoyed that um minx um was about uh lord Dun no he's not a lord like his name's dunford anyway and he randomly inherits this land and he goes to inspect it and he finds henry um who's henrietta but she goes by henry she's a bit of a tomboy and she's determined to drive him out of this land you know she's been there since she was small she's sort of a ward of this land and she's been there. She doesn't have anywhere else to go. She loves it. And she's like, this guy's going to come in and want to make all these changes and not give a damn about anything. So she's like, I'm going to show him. Um, and it was just, it was really fun. I loved Henry. She was such a tomboy. Um, so yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Um, then I read another Julia Quinn book, but that was part of a different series. Um, and that's um, Everything in the Moon. Um, this one was quite interesting because it was kind of a second chance romance, um, which are not normally my favourites. I'm I'm not always a huge fan of the friends to lovers trope um, or the second chance romance. You know, something's happened. There's been a misunderstanding and then years down the line, you know, everything gets sorted out. Not my favourite um, sort of romance trope, I have to say. But in the long run, I actually ended up quite enjoying this one. Um, he is an earl, I think, and she is just a vicar's daughter. And they're quite young when they first meet, but they plan to elope. And then um, Victoria, I can't remember his name for the life of me, um, fails to show up. And when he goes to try and find her, she's asleep in bed. So he thinks that she basically just wasn't interested and broke his heart. Um, but there's more to the story about what... Um, went wrong why she didn't show up um so it was really quite cute and it was quite a quick read and like i say i did end up enjoying it um the next book that i read was all we want by jay daniel this is part of her um is it alabama summer as part of her Alabama something series anyway and it's a short novella that follows the second couple from the series Tess and Luke and it's about them really they really want to have a baby and nothing's working and it's stressing out Tess um so they decide that maybe they'll adopt um and it's all about them trying to sort of come to terms with things and it's really quite cute Tess and Luke are not my favorite couple from this series it was quite nice to catch up on everyone you know see how everyone's doing from the series because it is a series i enjoyed but out of all of the couples they are probably my least favorite so i enjoyed the novella but um i would have you know if it had been a novella from another couple's point of view i probably would have liked it more um but yeah i, d I did enjoy that one so the next book that i read is brighter than the sun by julia quinn And this is the second book to um, Everything and More. And um, this one was quite cute as well. It was It's about the girl from um, Everything and More. Um, it's about her sister. And she's basically out walking one day and a man falls from a tree. And he asks her to marry him because he is basically he's going to lose his inheritance if he doesn't get married within 10 days and she thinks this is ludicrous you know but then when she goes home to sort of basically the woman that is going to become her stepmom um she is just absolutely intolerable and so she decides maybe that she actually will contemplate this guy's 
proposal um it was really fun i think i preferred it that little bit more to um everything and more um most of the julia quins that i've read this month i would give you know around the um the four out of five apart from the next book that i read was to catch an heiress by julia quinn this book I only gave sort of like the 3.5 out of 5 because it felt very different to the other Julia Quinn books that I'd read. Um, I didn't, I just didn't love it as much. So it's about a guy who is sort of working for um, kind of like the Regency Secret Service and he mistakes this girl, um, Catherine, he mistakes her from some, for some deadly Spanish spy and he basically abducts her and wants to get the information out of her. Um, she is not a Spanish spy but she also wants to escape a difficult situation. She has been passed from pillar to post from quite a young age um, because she is basically a ward, she's an orphan and so she gets passed around um, and her latest one wants to marry her off to her son so he can have her money um but they're really vile so she's escaping um and then she gets captured um and then basically it goes from there it wasn't awful i just didn't love it as much as the others um i just feel that it didn't have the same oomph um i didn't love the characters as much i didn't find it as funny as julia quinn's other books um but it was still an okay enjoyable read the next book I actually had the physical copy of, but I have lent it to my mum because she wants to read it, and that is Dumplin by Julie Murphy. Murphy. I have had this book on my shelf for a really, really long time, and I've wanted to read it for a long time. I just do not know what stopped me from reading it. It's one of those situations where you have no idea why you haven't read it, you just haven't. Um, but I picked it up, and I read it really quickly. I really enjoyed it. I think what urged me to pick it up that bit quicker was the fact that um, it's coming to Netflix in December um, and I really want to watch it so I thought I'd better read the book first. Really really enjoyed it. It's about a plus size girl and she's in you know a southern town where basically everyone's lives revolve around the beauty pageant and you know she's not the typical entry. Um, her mum is obsessed with the pageant because she won it when she was younger and now she helps run it and she ends up deciding that she's going to kind of protest um, by actually entering the pageant. And it's really cute. It's really funny. Um, I wish... The only thing with this book is I did really, really enjoy it. Um, and I gave it 4.5 out of 5. I just wish that the end for me had been a bit more... Um, I don't know, just with the romance aspect of the book, I know that's not the complete focus of the book, but with the her love interest of Bo, I really just wish there'd been a great ending, um, you know, like a, a less, I guess it's not ambiguous, but kind of ambiguous, I just wanted like a big um, definitive ending for that book. Other than that, I really enjoyed it and I gave it 4.5 out of 5. Um, the next book that I read, I actually read the physical copy of, and that is The Darkest Star by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And this is kind of a spin-off series to her Lux series. I think it's called the Origin series. Um, and I'm a big, big fan of Jennifer L. Armentrout's Lux series. Um, so really excited to get back into that world. And this focuses on the character of Luke. Um, if you've read the Lux series then you'll know I would definitely not recommend picking this book up if you have not read the Lux series because so much of it will not make sense um just not make sense at all um so we see Luke who is an origin um that we know from the previous series which means he's kind of um he's the mix between a Lux and a human and he's kind of you know been genetically bread if you like so he's extremely strong has all the gifts of a luxon but kind of you know amplified um and then evie that's her name i had to think for a second there stumbles basically into this club and she meets luke and he acts as if he knows her but she hasn't got a clue who he is um and then weird stuff starts happening people start turning up dead and they look like they've been killed by a luxon um uh yeah i really enjoyed 
being back in this world, like I said, <coughs> and seeing some of the characters from the previous books. Um, I do think that this is um, a lot of secrets and revelations happen, and obviously there's sort of the romance, um, which I liked. Um, but I think this book has obviously, I think, set up um, a lot of things for the for the rest of the series. Um, but I did really, really enjoy it. Je no one writes arrogant, good-looking men like Jennifer L. Armentrout. So definitely recommend picking this up but only like as i say if you've read the luck series and are a fan of that the last book that i managed to finish in november was sex machine god i can't speak sex machine by victoria ashley um i gave this book sort of 3.5 out of 5 and um, the darkest star i did give 4 out of 5 by the way um and dumpling i said 4.5 out of 5 um so i stumbled across this book on instagram actually someone posted a teaser and i was quite intrigued by it because even though it has you know the um suggestive title um the teaser that i saw was all about how you know he had been boy the, the guy um jace is it jace no jensen there we go um he had been boyfriend material once he had been even husband material and then something happened and then now all he's good for basically is women use him for his body to forget all their problems essentially is the crux of the book um so he is a successful businessman he owns like construction and rentals and then cammy turns up to him one night basically and i want to rent one of your properties she's drunk she's just found out her partner of five years has been cheating on her um and then it goes from there really um it was quite an okay book it was quite a quick read um but for me um that it wasn't there wasn't an awful lot of substance to it the second half of the book where you kind of find out a bit more about jensen and why the way he you know the way he kind of is um but towards the beginning like the way he behaves i'm like why is she interested in him like honestly he's an asshole um and it was just very hard to like him in that first half of the book like you can have like a arrogant domineering kind of brooding character and you can still like them um it's a very fine line but with this one i just didn't like him at the beginning and it made it very hard then to like him in the second half but all in all it was not a bad um read it was quick light and yeah that was all it is really not not a favorite but it was okay so that's everything that i read in november guys if you've read any of these books as always let me know in the comments down below i always love to know um so yeah thank you so much for, for watching and i'll see you all soon bye guys